Okay, Don, so we're going to have a look at some code. Um, so it would be great to have a look at some examples of those typical tasks that a developer needs to do, perhaps when learning a language as well, to see how that would look in, in F Sharp. Yeah, great. So what we're going to do is we've opened up Visual Studio 2010, and we're going to be walking through a, a simple example, uh, which is actually taken from someone learning F Sharp, yeah. and they had this moment where they, they came up with a piece of code that they thought, wow, that's really beautiful, I can, I can explain that to right. To anyone, uh, to a domain specialist, to you know, to another programmer, you know, it's very clear and what what is going on, very clear and compositional, and uh, we'll we'll walk through that and, and use use do a bit of sharp along the way. And, and one thing that some people might not have seen before is this part of Visual Studio. Can you say just a couple of words about that? Right, so this is F Sharp Interactive, uh, and I'll, I'll do a clean, clean restart here, so let's, let's reset that session. And you can find F Sharp Interactive by uh, view other windows here. And it's down here, Control right. Alt F is the, the, the shortcut. And it's a dynamic compiler for F Sharp, and it uh, uses uh, Reflection Emit to, to, to generate uh, native you know, .NET code and then native code ultimately on the fly. Yep. And as you uh, evaluate fragments in, 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 in the session, it's traditionally called a read eval print loop that you, uh, you, you we might think of more as a sort of send eval display loop. Yeah, okay. It's a little bit less, uh, you don't tend to type into the window uh, as much as you might think when you first see this tool. The, the user model is much, much more that you're working on a script which is sort of like a document that you're preparing, a bit like you work on a Word document or any, okay. other, any yeah. other sort of thing that's sort of yeah. in progress, a spreadsheet as well to some extent. And uh, the, the document will be your record of how you've solved a particular problem. Often you should structure your document so that if you run through it from top to bottom, then you'll get back to you know, the consistent sort of state. Right. And you'll find yourself restarting F Sharp Interactive now and then and sort of running through it clean to yeah. make sure that what you've got really yeah. uh, captures your, your thinking and your, what your problem investigation. Okay. Uh, so uh, we'll start by just doing a little bit of printf and um, say hello world. Yeah. Uh, printf is an F Sharp library for uh, type safe uh, printing. Uh, but you can also just use the .NET formatting libraries uh, directly. So you can do system console right line on hello world. And, and, and this is great, right? Because it means that uh, a, a, someone learning F Sharp doesn't have to learn a whole new series of libraries. They've got access to the whole .NET framework. Right, and they, not only they've got access to the framework, but they can sit. You can sit down with a script, uh, which you can access just by sort of Control N in, in Visual Studio. You can come down here, create a script, F Sharp script file, and uh, bang, you've got yourself a, 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 new, a new script to kind of to to, to, to play in, and. In any, in any F Sharp context, but particularly the, the script context, you can just use these .NET components and start playing with them directly. You know, if you want to make a beat, you can make a beat. You just start, uh, you just find the, find the, 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 the library, the namespace, yeah. Yeah. namespace and, you, and you get this feeling that you're often playing with or experimenting right. with a particular .NET component. I think this actually is one of the real roles that F Sharp okay. can serve okay. today, that if you wanted to sit down and explore a, a component that somebody else has written and you've got those, you know which object is the root object you have to create and then everything kind of leads from that, mm -hmm. then sit down and play with that. Or you say maybe you play with a web service, for example. Right, right, right. You, uh, you, you create your DLL, it gives you access to the web service, yeah. and you just open up a connection to it and say, hey, what does this thing do for me? And you play, and it's much, it is quite fun, quite playful, yeah. quite explorative. Yeah. And it's that exploration, that thing that we, we, we discussed earlier, yeah. it's the whole exploration of, of the problem domain in this, yeah. in this window. Yeah. yeah. And, <clears throat> okay. So, uh, let's, uh, we've got our right line, we'll put this back here. Yeah. Now we can use um, other, other .NET libraries. Uh, for example, uh, to do visualization, uh, you might use Windows Forms, or you might also use the WPF uh, right. controls. Right. I, I tend to use a mix of yep. the two. So let's create ourselves a new form. We're going to go visible equals true, and topmost equals true here. Put a little new on that. So there's our form. So as I said, you, uh, you start with an exploration and then start to make it, you, you start to work on your code a little bit. Right. So maybe you uh, cut out this, this out and you put open at the top, which is the F sharp equivalent of using. And uh, it's, it's equivalent, equivalent code. So now we want to say, start to investigate what we can set on a form. And one of the things we can set is the text. 
So um, let's show the shop interactive. Yeah. And you can see that we've set the title on the front right. here. It's certainly refreshing not having to go through the whole, you know, compile, run, F5, every time you do this, and you can just right. explore the domain. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> yeah, you can use it to explore software components, you can use it to, uh, to prototype new algorithms right. and, and then write the test cases for those yeah. new algorithms. Yeah. You can use it to te for, for sort of develop unit tests on an existing C-sharp component. Right. Right. I think uh, that's a really strong use of F-sharp mm -hmm. is to, 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 for, for people who just need to do type safe testing of, of, existing, yeah. of existing code. Yeah. Okay, so I'll get rid of this now and we're actually going to use a, uh, a helper script here which uh, <coughs> opens up one of these windows, but it also defines a little function called show. And the purpose of the show function uh, is that it allows us to show any F sharp, any piece of F sharp data uh, in, the, in, a, in a window over here. It does a little bit of formatting work on the, on the data. So uh, we can, for instance, take the, the value of the numbers from 0 to 99 as an F sharp list, and we show those when we have it. Uh, displayed over here. So let's create ourselves uh, some more data. So we're going to create ourselves a random number generator. Random here. So for instance we can uh, open up uh, the random and create ourselves a random number generator and generate a random number and just keep doing that and see the random numbers coming through. Okay, so <coughs> just find a little cheat, cheat sheet down below. <laughs> so let's take uh, for i in zero to a thousand. We're going to uh, generate uh, a new random number. Okay, and we're going to show show that value. Okay, so one thing I've been using here is this pipeline operator, yep. uh, which is very popular in F-sharp. It lets you take some value and pipe it into some particular function. It's just like going show on this value, but it lets you generate data and then, you know, well, send it somewhere or do some tail end of things that you need to actually do some sort of visualization on the data. So now here we've generated the numbers from uh, four, uh, 1,001 random point numbers, right. and ra random numbers, and we're just displaying them in the, in the list over here. Okay, so similarly we might uh, generate uh, a random integer <coughs> and then that's a okay. random integer yeah. from 0 to 99. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. So uh, we've got ourselves our, a list of floating point numbers and a list of random floating point numbers. Uh, Right, so the code we're going to look at here is this moving average code. All right. So this is to say, we've got uh, some uh, a set of uh, floating point numbers, and we want to take well, what's the average over the last three days right. for three the three elements in the sequence? Right, okay. Right, right. So it's a it's a, ta it's, a it's a moving average across yeah. across the um, across the sequence. So <coughs> let's take a look at the the, the the solution to this problem. So first of all, the first thing we're going to do is. Uh, d take uh, a win windows of the, um, of the floating point sequence. So let's take a look at this on the whiteboard. So here's our, here's our sequence of, of numbers here. Okay. And it's very typical in functional programming that we have these highly compositional operations right. to, so we, that say work uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a sequence of data. And, uh, sort of highly reusable elements of what you can do with these kind of shapes of information. Right. And so this is going to take windows of the data. So let's say we have a window size of three. Then the first element, we're going to get a new sequence, which is going to contain these three elements as the first element. And then the next element is going to be these three elements. 
And the next element is going to be these three elements. Okay. Like that. Okay. Right. So it's a sliding set of windows yep. Yep. along the sequence of data. Okay. Okay. So this is a, a built-in operator in the uh, the, the F# -sharp standard libraries, uh, seek.window. Okay. Uh, returns a sequence that yields sliding windows of containing elements drawn from the input sequence. Each window is returned, to, returned as a fresh array. Right. Okay, so that's great. So now that we've got, let, 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 let's experiment with that and just check that it's doing what we think. So let's take the L0 sequence, which was, uh, if we remind ourselves, that was this. So it's a 0, 1, okay. 2, 3, 4. That's our first list, yeah. Yeah, and we'll take those in windows of size 3. And we'll show those windows. Okay, great. Okay. So, yeah, 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, yeah. uh, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 1, 3, 4, 5. Great, so, great. And yeah. uh, we could do the same on the, uh, the random, <coughs> random sequence. Indeed. Okay, great. Right, now for each of these arrays that we have, we want to add them up. Okay. So that's very simple. So for each of the arrays, so seek.map, we want to make a new value. We want to take the array and we want to transform it to a new value. Okay. So we just add up that right. array, so array.sum on that array. Okay, so let, let, let's do that. So, we do it on L0 here, and we'll show those. Right. And this looks good. 3, 6, 9, 12, a good nice arrow right. progression through the, <coughs> through, the, through the sequence. And now, uh, we, of course, we want to divide these by the length of each one to get an average, okay. because it's average over three. Yeah. <coughs> and so the last thing we're going to do is to do a map here. So for each sum, which is we call S, we take S and we divi divide it by uh, well, 3.0 here. Okay. 3.0. And we show that, and then we get the, the average coming out. And if we can go back to our original... Uh, original list, we'll see that average. Now if we take a longer sequence of windows here, <coughs> then um, we have to divide by 30 here. Yep. Okay. Then of course the averages are, will be converging, because we're taking longer longer sequences, okay. the averages are converging okay. closer to the 1050. And what I love about this is, is actually your thought process is actually mapping extremely well onto the way you're yeah. working. Yeah, so yeah, as, absolutely. You, as you think through the problem, yeah. those map into a series of functions that you compose together using the pipe operator. Yes, and all of this is immensely reusable as right. a set, set of operators. <coughs> now, it may be that uh, there are, of course, more efficient implementations of moving average. I'll, 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 we should say that okay. up front. And it's important to realize that part of the f -sharp methodology would be able would be being able to take something like the moving average function, and right. if necessary, if it is the performance critical part of your code, yeah. then write the more efficient implementation, yeah. which may be more imperative, and that, that's fine. You may be more object-oriented, something keeping you more yeah. of an accumulator state okay. as it's going through. Okay. <coughs> um, and, uh, yeah, and refining this, this function, but the actual sig signature of the function may not change right. at all. Right. It will right. still be a sequence of floating point numbers coming out the end. Uh, but that process of refining from thinking through yeah. to yeah. Uh, final code is, is can be part of the F sharp methodology as well. Okay. <clears throat> Great. So uh, I thought for the next example, uh, what we're going to do is uh, take a look at <coughs> working with some online data stream. Okay. So in this case, we work we generated our own stream of floating point numbers, yeah. and yeah. we worked with that and said. It's much more common that you'll be getting data from the from the outside world, right? Okay. <coughs> so in this case, we're going to be working with Twitter, right? Uh, and uh, the the kind folks at Twitter do provide a subset of the stream of tweets coming right. through the the, the the Twitter service. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, anybody who's got a Twitter account can access uh, the, the, the the subset of what we call the the fire hose of, right. of, okay, of, okay, of okay. tweets. Yeah. So uh, we've loaded ourselves up a little helper class written in F# -sharp, which allows uh, us to access, uh, given a username and password, allows us to access yeah. this subset of tweets coming through. It's not just their tweets; it's it's it's, it's right. The public it's, it's, it's a public in general. Yeah. So uh, this uh, this is a lovely little object here, a beautiful bit of F# -sharp, uh, object oriented programming. Because okay. one of the key things that works very well in F# -sharp object oriented mm -hmm. programming is that you can create these simple 
you know, you create simple, elegant types mm. which uh, encapsulate some some exterior process. So, and this is standard methodology, but for some reason, uh, F sharp in particular is, it excels at creating simple, reusable components yes. Yes. Uh, as you uh, it, with with your object-oriented programming. Right. So you can see this Twitter stream sample gives us a constructor here, username, password, gives us an object here, and with that object we have two members. We can stop listening, or we can we can listen in to the right. event of new tweets, and we can also just press the stop listening button to okay. so we're disconnecting. Okay. And this is just an event, just like a normal .NET event, which mm -hmm. gives us back a, uh, a stream of strings, and these strings are actually XML blobs okay. uh, representing each of the tweets. Right. So we've created ourselves a Twitter stream, and we're going to add our show function here. So what are we going to, what are we going to do here? We're going to listen in, uh, and what are we going to do with that XML blob? We're just going to send it to the show function here. Yeah. So as you can see, we're we having the tweets okay. coming through here. The, the world is as busy as, yeah. as ever <laughs> in, in tweeting away. You can see the IDs coming through here. So we're not getting right. every tweet in the world. We're getting every hundredth tweet or okay. something, okay. it looks like. Wow. Uh, and a fair bit of information of what the, what the world is doing. And we can stop listening to that. Okay. Uh, another way we could have written that um, is uh, to pipe this into the...